my name's Mediera. I'm going to show you the Unitra Eltronic 109 today. Uh, it's a Polish synthesizer from the uh, early 1990s, uh, I think in 1990. Um, it's quite a unique little thing. It's very rare. It comes in a really, really, really sturdy carry case, um, which is actually part of the body of the synth. Um, okay, so let's look at some of the features that we have. Um, the first section we're going to look at is on the right hand, the white keys, the upper end. So we've got a button here, synth or organ. We're going to look first at the synth sound. Quite a quite a sort of typical... I'm just going to turn up my monitors a bit. Okay, yeah, so... First thing we're going to look at then is the synth the synth capabilities of this thing. It is an analog synthesizer. It's all circuitry below. Um, so yeah, you have this button here for the right hand section, uh, synth or organ. So uh, let's look at the synth part. As you can tell, it's got a nice character. And as far as I can work out, it's got eight note polyphony. Actually, maybe more. I don't know. It's got a massive amount of polyphony, more than more than I've got fingers, which is pretty good. So uh, you've also got the pitch. Could have been to an octave change, but it does it in the old school organ style of uh, the feet of the waveform. Um, in the synth section, you've got two um, waveforms. You've got the square wave and something that it calls the staircase, um, which is uh, an interesting idea. Uh, this would be the staircase. And a uh, higher pitch. Okay, so that's the synth section. Um, you've got a nice red button here. I'm not going to press that at the moment. Um, so for each part, you have, of course, the attack, the decay, the sustain, and the release. Um, we'll leave it on the staircase. So it sounds, I quite like it with the, the long attack, I quite enjoy that. Okay, so you've got your classic attack, decay and release things, you can have a really short. And you can have a super long. Standard procedure. Okay, so the other thing you've got on it is um, what appears to be a low pass filter, frequency and resonance knobs here. Uh, so let's have a play. I'll just play. Very subtle. The frequency cutoff is very subtle without any resonance. If we turn the resonance up, you'll hear. standard I'm not sure what um, what poles or anything that low pass filter is but it is um, it's it's got a bit of character and it, this synth also has a feature I've never seen on a synth before you have this button here which says filter to ADSR what this does is the envelope you're creating here with the uh, ADSR the attack decay sustain and release is actually also sent then to the cutoff frequency so when you play the note, if we have a long attack, you'll hear the synth opening up the filter as well as the amplitude. Quite subtle. Let's leave the 
okay on a, on a bit. For each section, I don't know why you've got a volume knob for each section. If this volume knob's down, the white keys do nothing. Okay, um, then let's go back to this red button we looked at earlier. So this is a phase, it says phasing, uh, which is, it says phasing, which uh, we'll look over here. We have the speed, depth, and feedback that you would associate with a phaser. Let's turn the, Cut off and envelope. Back to normal. There we go. So then, if you listen, listen carefully. It's got a phasing quality. Ooh, the depth's a little bit crackly. I'd recommend if you have any uh, instruments, just as a, a quick tip, but any instruments with the crackly knobs or any gear at all, uh, buy some contact fluid. Costs about a fiver, and um, it will it will reinvigorate your equipment. I've um, I I swear by the stuff now after only having recently discovered it. So that's the phaser. You've got speed as well. It's a really strange waveform shape. Maybe maybe it's their staircase. Perhaps it's the staircase. I don't know. One thing for my money. That phasing speed doesn't go fast enough. That's the that's top speed. It goes super slow, which I think probably is useful. I want it to go a bit faster because yeah a little bit faster just for a nice little tremolo but it's a good little a good little setup so we've looked at the synth voice on the synthesizer now we're going to look at the organ voice um, very typical organ setup if you're familiar with any uh, electronic organs um, and a very, very familiar sound. What you don't have here with the organ is the uh, ADSR and um, filter controls. You don't have them, unfortunately. Um, but let's have a go with it anyway. You can see as I'm changing these it doesn't have any effect. The only the only effect we can have on it is the decay there. Yes, yeah, the only the only effect we can have on it. Um, there are the um, like we have here for the octave changes. There are different harmonics we can change. Generally, they're really quiet. And some of them I find quite difficult to hear. Yeah, that's with just flute eight and you really can't hear anything. I would just play it. I would just play it with all of them turned on because it's quite low level sound otherwise. Uh, let's look at the phasing again. You can have the nice phaser on there. Let's put it on really slow because the slow phaser is alright. Um, quite subtle, really. It's quite a subtle thing. Turn the phaser off there. If anyone can explain to me why there's a percussion button, I'd love to know. Uh, if you turn off the percussion button, 
you get absolutely no output from the organ voice. I know on some organs it tends to add a punch, it adds punch to the sound. Um, I have it on another organ of mine, but on here it just you just get no sound if it's off. Maybe that's part of the mystique. I don't know. Okay, so uh, we're going to look now then at the lower section of the keys, which is I think it's almost a separate unit. Um, you cannot. You cannot, um, you cannot continue that sound down, which I don't know, for me it would be nice to, it would be nice to go into some real low octaves with it, um, maybe circuit bending you could, you could do something with that. Okay, so let's have a look at this, I think you can see all of the buttons, yes you can, you can see all of the buttons, good. Okay, so we've got the bass section, this is the bass organ sound which is controlled here in a very similar way to the organ. Again, you've got a volume knob just for the bass organ. Not sure why you've also got you've got a knob for the for like for the same function. I don't know why. So yeah you've got that's, this is your bass. Again you it's polyphonic. Um nice nice little effect. Now it's got the again you can have the phasing on it was turned on then. Again. Combinations of the harmonics there. My particular favourite bass sounds, there's three fundamental bass sounds with this thing. You've got bass guitar. Oh sorry, no, it's still on organ. So when it's clicked on the bass, you've now got two organ sounds. This is just a really low level, really subtle bass sound. I suspect that would be nice with a, a filter on it. Probably work, probably work quite well as um, a little. A little bass sound, but what you've got is this bass guitar button, which is my favourite. It just works really well, I think it's just a nice punchy little kick. If you've got a nice little soft sound here, it's a nice little kick. Okay. So let's just hear a little bit of it. it. Takes a while to warm up. The first contact that you make tends to be a bit jittery. But once it's made that contact, it's pretty responsive. Uh, if anyone can identify this song, I'll give them ten pounds or no, ten pence. Okay, I'll give you ten pence if you identify this song. Okay. can't to be honest okay uh, yeah so this is the synth um, as it is it's got a lot of character to it I quite like it um, there's nothing else I've ever seen like it at all um, it's a nice little instrument to play it is it is sort of that halfway point between being a synthesizer and an electronic organ obviously you've got full-size keys which is nice they're not velocity sensitive but I think that's that's all that's pretty standard for um, analog equipment. 